Hey, how you doing, man? Hey. Chris Day. Ethan. Nice to meet you. Yeah, we um, we actually helped the cop because uh, a chick said he felt her up. Oh, really? Yeah, and she hit filed all kinds of shit, and my video actually uh, showed that that didn't happen. Yeah, it didn't happen. Yeah, yeah so I mean, Keen has a whole new respect for the video now. Yeah. Saved his career. Yeah, and then I mean, you get the bad, and then you get the bad interaction. Having an objective view is a benefit for everybody. Yeah. yeah, like I said, I mean, I try to do what I'm supposed to be doing out here, and as long as I'm doing that, I mean, I don't care who's watching, who's well, the, videoing, you know what I mean? Well, well so. the, thing, the thing with Healy, people like him, when you're acting like an ass, you're not talking to some five-year-old kid that has just a couple hundred views. We've got half a million views with a thousand subscribers. Right. You're going to look like a dick in front of all those people. Right, yeah. So... You know, and then then you have to go in front of the testier and explain why you were a fucking jerk and complaints are going to come in and yeah. you get enough of them, you know, you, you establish a pattern right. and there goes your career. Yeah. You know, it, it, yeah. Doesn't, it doesn't make sense. If you treat me with respect and talk to me like a human being, you're going to get it right back. You know, how you doing? Hey, right. what's up? If you're going to be a dick to me, I'm going to be a dick back. Right. You know, that's just the, the way I do it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's human yeah. nature, right? With some, with some people. So. Yeah, well, a public official doesn't need to be a dick. You know, you're old to be professional, whether they like it or not. And you sign up for extreme public scrutiny, so you know that you're going to be heckled, you know you're going to be hated. You know, you, that's what you do. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Free speech, you know, has its boundaries, but, you know, when it comes to scrutiny and free speech, you really can't do much. You're the one that's old. Right. You know, you can't be, you know, saying, oh, your, your fucking videos are a joke, kid. Oh, I'm a kid, huh? And then when you're halfway down the street, you call me a kid again. It's just, it's just making I, would, I wouldn't have guessed that you were 41, but you wow. definitely look younger than that. I'd say, like, in your 20s or something. Wow, so. I appreciate that. <laughs> I have a son that's 20. Oh, really? Yeah. Are you local? You live in Manchester? Or? No. No? No, I live in Keene. Oh, do you? Yeah. So you guys I've been, just... there, I've been there since... Uh, Early part of 2007. Yeah. Are you part of the, the Free State too, or just uh, see? Just that's part? the thing. That that's what kills us here in, in Manchester. It's just me and him, New Hampshire Regional Cop Walk, and we're not Free State. No. We get collectivized, hot, hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I we, know there's a lot of like the Free State movement that's moving out. You know, moving out to that area and that part of the state. And you know, we've had interactions with them here. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it seems like sometimes they try to goad us into. You know, an interaction that is going to go south. You know, yeah. they, they try to come and look for us to do something so they can catch it on video. And it's like, you know, I'm not out here to try to... I, I don't want to accost um, a cop from doing something bad or have a bad interaction. I just want to be left alone doing it. Yeah. Like, when you start roughing with my fellas like a dickhead and you want to use that authoritarian badge against me, you're gonna get a, a bad reaction, and that's gonna be huge on TV. And yeah. you know, they just make it a spectacle all on their own. I don't need to do much. Right. Um, but basically, I my problem with the with law enforcement is the preconceptions. Uh, they're training officers how to preconceive that there's stuff wrong before it's even wrong. So you're fucking wound up like a spring already. You know what I mean? I understand combat-oriented thinking better than most. Like, I, mean, I understand it extremely I well. I mean, some, sometimes you got to look at it as it's a worse situation than it is because it's easier sometimes to come down than go back up. If you if you walk into something, you're like, ah, oh, this is just a, you know, per se, like a routine traffic stop, and then somebody turns on you, they got a gun, or, you know, they got something like that. Four, four officers in Manchester have died in, like, almost 100-something years. That's not a bad yeah, ratio. I mean, we're, we're still pretty lucky up here four, in this, yeah, four, this part of the 4, state. Four thousand eight hundred something people died in two years unarmed, and that's huge. Yeah. And, and, it, and it's you know I feel bad for some officers that are being you know shot down verbally, um, and you guys you know I'm collectivizing you already. Uh, but the 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 profession as a whole, they're being trained to be combat oriented. And that shouldn't be the case. It should be yeah. um, socially oriented, not combat oriented. Cops but, should not be used as soldiers or front line to extort money for victimless purposes. I mean, trust me, 
You don't want to fucking yank people over fucking taillights all night. I mean, how many of those are you going to find drugs in? One out of a hundred, you know? It's, it makes no sense. Stopping people f- the right to free travel is wasting your time and wasting taxpayer time, and you're really not getting much revenue out of it to begin with, especially when you have, like, one of the highest overdose rates in the state. Yeah. You know, it's bullshit. I mean, we were on Cedar Street the whole the whole morning. I was, I mean, not the whole morning, the whole afternoon, and I was having fucking hookers walk up to me every three minutes. Right. You know, the, the, the area's pretty bad. Right. I mean... Victimless crimes is where, you know, they, they need to draw the line. It's soaking the system up, it's wasting your time, and it's getting you guys wound up to to the point where every traffic stop you think something really bad's going to happen. Well, but you this is think not Fallujah, man. But, but you got to think about what's happening across the country, you know. Officers are just sitting in their car, you know, eating a sandwich or doing their paperwork, and people are coming up and they're, they're shooting them while they just sit in their car, and they're not doing anything, you know what I mean? They're not accosting anybody. I mean, who knows what... Ha- what transpired up to that we don't know that but or what type of officer that was or what they you know how they conducted themselves out in the public but from what things are being reported is these guys are just sitting in their car minding their own business and, and people are walking up and in uh you know take a pop shots at them so whether that's happening here in new hampshire that's happening in chicago or or these other places the prob- it's the prob- still the probability of a cop getting shot versus an unarmed person is like nine to one. Yeah, I mean, I've never done the research. Uh, you it's, obviously it's, it's have. Crazy. I don't. I don't it, know the numbers on the, that. The but. numbers are actually absolutely crazy. You know, I was born in Brockton, Massachusetts. And I was brought up in Brooklyn, New York, yeah. like during the '80s and '90s. So, trust me, Brockton was no joke in the '80s. That place was nuts. Uh, Brooklyn was pretty bad too, depending on depending on where. I mean, Red Hook was nuts in the 90s, so was Mercy Street, was pretty bad. Um, uh, Jamaica Queens was really bad. Jamaica Plain in Boston was nuts yeah. back then. Um, I just, you know, my, my feeling is that I walk into every situation with that heightened sense of awareness because I want to go home to my family at the end of the night, you know. But a heightened so, sense of awareness is not going to get you out of a situation where you're being shot at. You're going to be shot at. Well, yeah, you're regardless, you're going to be you're going to be shot at, but if you're, you know, somewhat potentially prepared for that to happen, you might be able to react quicker than if, you know, I'm walking up just lollygagging up like, oh, yeah, whatever, look at the moon, you know what I mean, not paying attention because they could get that quick drop on me just in that few seconds, you know, so. Well, don't you, I don't know. Do, do you think there should be a law, you know, politically a law, this is not going, do um, you think there should be a law protecting citizens? to actually select your target and not fire until you're fired upon just like a soldier would in the middle of Iraq who has a lot more worry about than a cop on the street do you know there's over a thousand a thousand people locked up in Leavenworth for violating the was it the Geneva Convention? no 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 uh, the rules of engagement over a thousand Cops don't have that. Then you can actually kill somebody unarmed and probably still be wearing bats the next day. Yeah. You'll be cleared because you felt your safety, was, you know, and you got qualified immunity because of your job. I mean, you don't have qualified immunity when there's negligent death. I mean, you could get sued still. Right. Um, qualified immunity gets shot down by the U.S. Supreme Court during the Clay case. So, um, then, you know, cops are worried now <laughs> because now they can get sued for negligence. Before that, they, it was very hard to. You had to go to a tort claim for that. But uh, I think there should be a law. You should not be. Able, you should not fire until fired upon. Some of these videos sounds, I'm but, seeing with a traffic stop and they're unloading over 4,000 rounds in a car. They didn't find one gun in the car. It's, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know about the... You can't fire on somebody until fired upon because, you know, the... Why should soldiers? I mean, I, I, I'm not. Well, but you're talking warfare, man. But in the military, a lot of you know, up until maybe now with Iraq, with the close quarters, you know, combat going in and out of houses, it was somebody was downrange, quite a ways away, and the probability of them hitting you with that first round, unless it's a sniper, isn't gonna isn't as high as it is in this type of environment. You know, when I'm up at a driver's side window and I see somebody coming out with a gun, if I wait for that person to shoot at me before I shoot them, 
that could potentially be the difference between me going home and, and that person. Well, look at the probability, though. 4,800 people in two years, unarmed. So well, I mean, they're, not, they're, they're not even waiting to select a target. I mean, they're shooting and then asking questions and assessing. I mean, I, I'm talking if I see somebody that has a weapon in their hand that I feel is going to use it against me if I don't, you know, do something to protect myself. I don't feel like that person should, I should allow that person to get a round off before I'm able to, to get a round off. You know what I mean? If there's, if there's a checkpoint right here, okay, on Baghdad Highway, right? Some dude comes up with an AK-47. We still can't fire upon him. We can't fire upon him here. We can't even fire upon him here. We only can fire upon him as soon as he points that thing at us. I think the cops should be able to have that same, that same, you know, uh, stipulation. Well, I mean, you know what I mean. If you walked up to me, and I don't, I don't know if you conceal carry or if you have a, no, a weapon I, I on you or not, gun. but no, I don't. you know, I can't just shoot you because you have a have a gun on you. You know what I mean? So. I would say that it, it's a, the perceived threat. You know, you got to be able to articulate that you perceive. Well, that, if you if you do, if you look at the four, the the four thousand I'm talking about, yeah. one had a beep, and the other one had it pulled out a cell phone quick. Oh, the other one had a flashlight. Oh, one guy had a taser. Or uh, oh, yeah, he had an ice cream bottle or something like that. They're really dumb, really really dumb. None of these cops selected that target. They automatically preconceived that he was a death threat before they even saw a ta target to begin with or a threat to begin with. Yeah. And now, you know, insurance companies don't even want to freaking represent police departments. They're having a hard time finding carriers. So now the government has to step in and say, okay, we're going to carry your insurance. And now you have a government agency basically controlling your insurance company. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can't speak for those situations. Obviously, it's not a situation that I was in. I don't know what led up to those, you know, officers deciding that there was an imminent threat that they needed to, you know, fire their weapons. I guess, you know, it, it wouldn't be right of me to say that they were right, wrong, or indifferent in what they, they did because I wasn't there. I wasn't in the situation, you know. But to me, in a, in a situation where what you were talking about, you know, you have to be fired upon before you know, firing yourself. I don't necessarily agree with that, but, you know, you do need to kind of be able to tell that this person is a immediate threat. It is a weapon that could potentially kill you before you, you fire your weapon. But again, I can't comment on those specific circumstances because I don't know what happened, what led up to that per, you know, them, you know, did they, this person just do a robbery where the store clerk said that they had a gun and now you're chasing after this person and they start coming out with something that you believe is a gun and you have, you know, prior knowledge that a clerk says that they had a gun during a robbery and you think that that's what they're coming out with and then it turns out it's their pager and not their gun and they don't have a gun because maybe they ditched it while you, you were chasing them or, you know, they dumped it before you came upon them or, or whatever, you know, I mean, there's a million different types of circumstances that could happen that could lead up to a situation like that, hey, I guess. Sw switching tables a little bit, we have a civil rights claim almost being ready to be filed um, on uh, Manchester PD. Um, and the reason why is because one of our correspondents, she's an editor uh, for uh, New Hampshire Regional Cop Block FB page. She writes for the FB page. She lives here in Manchester. She was uh, videotaping uh, a takedown and an arrest on an Angel Roberts over on Cedar Street, like three to four, was it four weeks ago? Around there, yeah. About four weeks yeah. ago. Still like a winner. Uh, four weeks ago, and a training officer named Finn came over and took her phone and said, I need it for evidence. She goes, you can't take my phone. And he threatened her and said, well, if you don't give me the phone, I'm going to arrest you for uh, obstruction of justice. So we, we went through every channel in the fucking book. We even sat down last Thursday with Maureen Tessier. Well, we were there for over an hour, right? Uh, at least. Uh, she actually interviewed both of us separately uh, because we had a, a separate complaint we were filing also on four undercover officers that we bumped into um, the Thursday prior to that um, in front of U-Haul on... Uh, Hooks at Road. Um, 
and uh, it's the perception of the Manchester Police Department that they can they think they can take a recording device for evidence. There is no law that I found that is constant right to stop a video recording of police in any aspect whatsoever, especially to find a clip. Um, and she's your superior, so you know you guys are following orders. Have you ever? Have you ever thought in your mind that whatever situation you're doing a takedown and somebody's taping something on the phone, did you ever think twice about just going over and actually grabbing that phone for evidence? I personally, I've I've never done it, you know. But I know that it has been been done in the in the past where you know crimes are captured. I mean, it's just like um, well, you need to subpoena them and you need to get a warrant for that specific warrant. And the thing is, she well, says, well, about... you, can, you can take it and we'll get a warrant afterwards. No, 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 you can't. Because that that arrest no longer becomes an objective view to the public because you guys can tamper with it. You know, the, the, but I think the, the, same, the same thing goes with exigency. I think we can take it because if we don't, it could potentially be deleted. Like your editor, if we said we're going to, you know. But that's someone's personal property. It's up to their discretion to delete it and not delete it. It's not your property. It's not. This is someone completely it's, uninvolved with the situation. It's yeah, lucky it, they if got it's that uh, uh, Glick to find it already. Um, Glick to find it in a, in two spots in that case. They said um, if the public wants to capture something that's happening in the public, it's their property. Yeah. It's not. It's not up to the police discretion to stop them or hinder them from actually capturing because the public is actually press. I don't know if a lot of people, a lot of people don't know that, but the public is the press. Yeah. Um, they, they, press is usually defined by media and stuff like that. It's kind of a stereotype, but press under law is actually the public's right to know. Um, but it's, it's very strange because I've been doing this a long time. I've been going after police for four years straight. Um, Nobody's ever taken you. Your recording they device. Oh man, they're afraid of death to do it to me. <laughs> I won a big lawsuit against Keen PD in 2006 and 7, so that's how I started getting into cop block to begin with. Yeah. Um, a bad interaction happened. I'm bound under law and a settlement agreement not to get into the facts because I, you know, I right. consensually signed an agreement not to um, disclose anything else other. Um, but anyways, I got hurt really bad. They got the wrong house. Um, no particulars involved, and I sued one, and they settled. Uh, and I've been doing cop block ever since. I first started doing this stuff with a group called Veterans Against Police Brutality, and then uh, I met uh, one of the co-founders of copblock.org, the national site, and then I started doing keen cop block stuff, and then I started my own chapter, which is New Hampshire Regional. And uh, he's more tech savvy than me, and when he took over the YouTube page using some of my videos, it just went went viral so right. you know people are starting to like our content how we do things I think it has a lot to do with what we're doing now there's a lot more good reactions than bad I don't usually have a, a camera in their face like a free state and acting like a jackass right. so, which I can do if you're a dickhead to me oh I'm a fucking dickhead man oh that's why I like tonight I mean you're yeah. standing off to the side here I, I didn't feel you were posing a threat you had your, your video out you know I might have a little concern if you know I know in some cases people have come right up to the window and they're like right in the face and you know I wouldn't kind of do in, that I use, yeah right I there. don't usually do that till the cars until the, the stop is cleared but yeah. I've seen three staters yeah. do that yeah I, I think it would get you a little nervy right and if it was on the highway usually I put my strobe on these have strobes on them yeah and I put the strobe on and I usually take my flashlight and have that going and usually we have reflective gear on like these blue patches that they press on it yeah. and it's got this big big reflective thing on it you know so we clearly mark was that just a scanner you got there no it's a uh, two-way oh so you can talk you that's a talk scanner and the two-way yeah yep. 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 so if we get so what do you, you scan everything in uh yep. in new hampshire is that um in it, the area it, usually from manchester we, and gets all we around. usually yeah. he usually downloads the area so the hillsborough area hillsborough county right um, and now we get this general area, and when we move to Keene, we get Cheshire County, we switch it over. Right. And the two-way radios have a, a six-mile radius on it. If you use the MAR channels, which is the marine channels, uh, they they go on wideband, so you pick up a lot more area on the marine channels. Okay. The Free State has got a, a um, I think they have a signal on, on the 
on these two. Keynet, that's the second one it's set to. Yeah, Keynet. Keynet, those are the Liberty activists in the uh, Keen area. Yeah. There's really no activism going on there these days. Yeah, we're, I haven't seen them in Manchester in, in a while. I know Rid the Ridley used to live here uh, at one point. I don't know if he's still in the city or not. Dave Ridley, he, he gets a lot of there. Keen, yeah, yeah um, he, he does. He, Bouncing between Portsmouth and Keene because yeah. I keep seeing videos, a lot of videos of him. He's more political, yeah. yeah. I met him at a, at the Beer Cat Rally in Congress. I'm not a big fan of Free State Broad. I've always kept them at arm's length. I ended up marrying an FSB um, Uber. Um, and uh, she's she's kind of distancing herself now yeah. too because. Everything I said was gonna happen ended up happening. Right. Like, watch, it's gonna end up imploding because there's no, no better than the government. Yeah. Um, but the political side, I, I don't know. I'm a little bit more religious than others. I'm a Christian. Um, a lot of anarchists in the community don't like that. And I, I never drank a day in my life, and I never did drugs, and I don't smoke. Yeah. So that you know, they think they automatically think I'm a fed or something because I don't. At first, they did. Um, so, you know, it, he, he's into the your anarcho capitalist. Yeah. You own Keene too? I'm in Winchester near there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Keene area. Yeah, I worked, uh, I worked in Hillsborough before I came came down here to Manchester. Okay. So, a little bit familiar with the area out there. But. Is it, is it, what, what's his name? Is it the Hillsborough Cup we bring a coffee to late night? Mm -hmm. On 202, on, on 202 right off yeah, of Yeah, I just know the area that he... He <laughs> might, might be a new guy. I've, I've been out of there for a little time. He said, what, five years, he said? You've been doing it five and a half? How is he? He's on YouTube. We'll have to watch the video. <laughs> well, we caught him twice. Uh, one night, I got in a face-to-face -face battle with the stadium. Because we were literally a quarter mile away from a stop. And he, they walked up to us with the flashlight. And I wouldn't get my flashlight out of his face because... He wouldn't get this out Yeah, so it was a flashlight war going up 15 minutes straight. It was the funniest video ever. Wow. And then I thought one of the troopers was a chick. So that didn't go well. No. It was like 30 below. It was like 27 below that night. And it was like 2.45 a.m. It was not a good night. But it See, was to me, I wouldn't even waste my time. Great a, video. I'd want to be in my car and be warm, you yeah. know what I mean? That's, what, that's what the Hillsborough cop said. <laughs> it's not even worth battling with you, like, whatever. You know yeah. what? You're videoing my stop. I'm done. I'm, I'm getting in my car, and I'm leaving. It's cold outside, you know? I'm not going to stand out he here. He says we're yeah, interfering like we're stick with the stop, and it was a closed access highway. I'm like, dude, this is Route 9, dude. It's not a closed access highway. Look, this mailbox is right there, you dumbass. It's not closed access, you moron. And then we got nailed by uh, a troop of Morel. He's from Troop C, and they let us go pretty quick. That was a good video. Yeah. Uh, the, the four, your, your officers, the four cops uh, two weeks ago, that hit big because they were being dicks to us. We got a full-blown complaint on them. I mean, as soon as I videotaped them, they wanted to know who the hell we were right off the bat. Yeah. And then they follow us to his car, and they're taking pictures of his VIN number, and, you know, videotaping inside the car. I'm like, dude, you guys are really stupid because you have no idea. We're not free stays, man. I'll take you to the hill. Yeah. You know? I'll Am I going to make the page? Is the stop going to make the page? Yep. Yeah. At the beginning of it, well, yeah. I wish I got the con the, the conversation, but this has very low memory in my my battery and my uh, fixie are died. Yeah. Usually I have like an one. I end up bringing like three extras tonight. I did for some oh. stupid reason. Because we actually went all the way to Tilton today. Oh, did we, we did Tilton, Belmont. Franklin um, and... Franklin is another atrium. We did atrium, Concord. And then uh, this was our last stop. We've been trying to hit Manchester um, every Thursday because we got that big uh, war going on with them. We've been taking the camera. Um, we already talked to a few... Uh, ACIU people, we talked to a couple of lawyers offices, and they're, they're like, man, I can't believe they're doing that. They really think they can just take a cell phone. That's nuts. And that comes to you stop and recording police at that point, so that gives you probable cause to stop a recording. Now, didn't um, the, uh, I thought the Free State Project fought that back with the chalkings. Remember when uh, the Free, Free State chalked the police department, the old police department, and we took a bunch of uh, cameras? I thought that the oh, I thought yeah. that went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court passed that we were all set with doing that. 
um, because it was evidence of a crime that was being committed. But am I mistaken on that? I mean, I don't know. I'll have to read it. I don't know too much about that. That must be I, I think, before me. I think the Free State fought that because we took a bunch of phones during that time, and I know that they were but coming that, into the station. But again, and, that, was be, that was also probably before Glick, too. Uh, different. That's a different decision. Is that well, what Glick versus Cuniff is the uh, the lawyer that that got arrested. And, you know, kind of roughed up, and they took his phone while he was videotaping an arrest in Boston PD. Um, so I'm still on cell phone. And uh, it was a U.S. Uh, the, the First Circuit Court of U.S. Appeals in Boston. So that case was landmark. Um, and it said uh, that. When, video, what year was that? Yeah. When was uh, Glick and Connors? That was two years ago, right? 2013, 14? I got 12 in my head for some reason. I don't think that's right, though. 12? Yeah. It had to be later. Yeah. I don't remember. It's Simon Glick against uh, Officer Cuniff at AL, which is there's like three more offices plus the city of Boston. I went all the way to the First Circuit Court of Appeals. In fact, that decision made the New Hampshire Memorial Attorney General's down. office send out a memo to all the police departments yeah, in the state. Um, and then you have uh, Garek versus Weir PD, and she won that one too. And then you guys again sued now, again. Um, For what? For what now? <laughs> you don't know the federal case that just got filed by ACLU two Is days the- ago? Is it, uh, I know there's one dealing with the panhandlers, right? No, uh, this is different no, one? this is, uh, a guy got arrested for secretly recording the cops and he got, he got charged for wiretapping. The, Supre- the Superior Court, um, dismissed the charge and now he's suing. ACLU's jumping on board. I forgot the other lawyer's name. He's from Manchester. I can't think of his name. I want to say List. Uh, hold on. Uh, Sean List. What's his name? Not sure. Um, Cole Council. Well, anyways, they filed a, a civil rights claim in federal court Monday against the Manchester PD for taking his taking his uh, recording device uh, because this, the Supreme Court said he had every right to secretly record police. They have no expectation of privacy, and that judge actually recited Glick, right. uh, the Glick decision. Yeah, um, I know that that came down. We were, we were told that, no, because for a while, guys were under the impression with the wiretapping that we could arrest if you didn't tell us that we were being recorded. You know, if you didn't come up and say, hey, you're being audio and visually recorded, yeah. and, you know, guys were under the impression that that fell under the wiretapping, and then we were told that, you know, that it doesn't, if you're in official, you know, conducting you're in your official, official capacity, capacity yeah. there's no expectation that you have to be told that. So I know that that... that that's what, did you, what did you think of that? You know, like I said, I don't... It yeah, you know, you know, some some cops it does, man. It still bothers them. <laughs> they don't want to be heard. They don't want to be seen. I mean, I I'd well, rather not be on YouTube because I, I feel like that. You know, I I'm on YouTube back uh, since years ago when uh, Lauren Canario, another free state uh, person that wouldn't give up her license and registration out in Milford, and then uh, she got arrested and ended up going to the Hillsborough County Jail and wouldn't cooperate they literally had to like pick her up put her in the back of the van pick her up bring her into court pick her up you know it, she wouldn't she wouldn't comply with anything so there was a uh, an incident that happened over at the jail and you know, I got my my mug on TV because you know the jail oh, yeah. wanted us to go out and, and talk to the people that were out there and that's I've, I mean I've heard all of Lauren's stories I actually live with her now so oh dear yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right you do yeah. Lord you <laughs> <laughs> That's my landlord. Small world, huh? <laughs> wow, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Lord's yeah. your landlord, man. I don't wow. even know what ended up happening with that case, but I know for a while she wouldn't talk to the judge, she wouldn't talk to anybody, and it was just like they just kept bringing her back and forth to court, wow. and they had to, like, lug her in and out every time that they did, from what I was told, anyways. Yeah. That was the way that... Wow, Lauren, Lauren's a hood, man. Yeah, she's the original victimless crime spree. It inspired Derek Chase, uh movie. <laughs> so, I, I find a lot of their antics, like... I don't know, especially the Robin Hood thing. And I live in Keene, so I gotta deal with it. I have a hate group specifically targeting me because they think I associate my shit with them. So, you know, it's 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 a not not a very good good collectivization. I like to be pointed at. Right? 
especially with recent. I mean, one day we were in Manchester, we were running into fucking brick wall after brick wall. No matter who we talked to, what official we went to, what what court we went to, we're all being accused as being free states like that didn't I mean just even be, if you wore the cop lock yeah stuff I mean stuff. even if we were we still had a right to do the business we were there for but I think there's a lot of misconception out there too and, and I know there's people uh, they've tried to do training and, and say that you know cop locks different than free state just like well, free some state's free different state, from well some free state is do cop lock yeah. I mean they're more part of the, the national cop lock but uh, New but Hampshire the regional is just me and him. There's like sovereign citizens too, which is a oh, whole another. They're, they're psycho. Extreme, they they want to. They want to kill you guys. Right. Most of them. They but talk about murdering cops. For a while, you know, a lot of people associated free state with sovereign citizens. You know, and that they were one and the same. But well, I'm I'm about my my idea is if you if you disarm the police and take away the military aspect of policing you're going to get more cooperation from the community allowing the community to build themselves around the police instead of the pol- 